Hello everybody, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today I have the joy of announcing that the Corona game engine now supports HTML5 targets. Now, if you've never heard of it, Corona has been around for a very long time, and it's one of the OG um, Lua-powered mobile game engines. It's amazing. There was a whole bunch of these for a long time. There was uh, Moa, there was Corona, there was uh, Marmalade, there was uh, Gitteros, there were a couple of other ones, and a lot of them have fallen by the wayside or changed in some shape or form, and Corona is still around. Now, it's gone through a bit of rocky times. It was bought, it was sold, it changed its business models, etc. But these days, it is freely available uh, for you. You have to sign in and register. But other than that, there's no cost to download or to get started with Corona. Uh, so like I said, it is a Lua-powered mobile game framework, and they just released a brand new build. This is uh, Corona 2018.3326. They haven't actually done a build in a while. This is the first one since... Uh, 2017, I think. Uh, and the major new feature, of course, is the beta support for HTML5 targets. So you can now build browser-based games using the Corona game engine, in addition to mobile games, desktop games, etc. Um, so obviously that is a big deal. It's also got, uh, let's see, what was it? Facebook instant game support, as well as support for VK social media sites versions as well. On top of that, there is support for the European mandated privacy issues, the GP, or the GDPR, uh, regulations are in there, so it's now compliant with those things. It is compatible with iOS 11.4 and Xcode 9.4. And uh, Google Play updates as well. So we've increased our Android level to uh, Android 27 or Android 8.1. Uh, and then on top of that, they open sourced a few of their libraries, including their timer, easing, transition, and composer libraries. Those are all available from uh, their GitHub account. And uh, they've also updated Facebook to be compliant with Facebook's new authentication mechanisms. Uh, pretty sweet stuff. As you see, the last release was 2017-3326, which was back on... Oh, no date. All right, that's hard to tell. Anyways... Oh, I'd have to scroll down to find it, but it doesn't really matter. Uh, it's been a while since they've done a public release, so I thought I would quickly check this one out. Now, I have not looked at uh, the Corona SDK in a very long time. I actually am a fan of Lua. It's one of my recommendations for a first language. It's very straightforward and simple to use. And this is your Corona simulator. Uh, the actual editing of your code is done off in Visual Studio. And I'm just going to go ahead and show you how uh, the HTML5 build process works. We're not going to go into any depth whatsoever, uh, but I will show you how easy it is to go ahead and build for HTML targets. So first of all, let's open up a sample. There's a whole bunch of samples built into Corona at this point. We'll just pick one of their physics samples right here um, and launch it. Now, this happens on every single one of my browsers. By default, this guy is absolutely ginormous. Not sure why. But you see here, here is the simulator where it is running your Corona platform. Uh, you can actually go here and change this between various different devices. So if you want to emulate running on um, the iPad, pad of the iPhone 10 X with its hideous little notch. You can do so here, switch to an iPad layout, etc. So let's go back to a Galaxy S or actually that's pretty small. Let's go up to a bigger one. Actually, we'll zoom in. There we go. So here is a very large zoomed in Galaxy S3 being simulated. And here you can see your game running. Now, if you want to go ahead and build this guy for HTML5, what you do is come up here. Now, first off, let me throw the caveat at you. I could not get HTML5 to build unless I launch the simulator as administrator. There seems to be a file permissions issue. Um, so launching as administrator at least fix this for me. What you do is come up here to build and then you can pick your platform. And here you can see there is now an HTML5 beta target available. Just click that guy. Um, here's the name of your app, the version of your app, and then you're just basically going to pick where to build it. And as is the way I do everything, let's throw that in my temp directory, which is probably 100 gigabytes in size at this point in time. Go ahead, browse in there. All right, so let's make a new folder called Corona HTML. And we'll build it there. Uh, so you can say create Facebook Instant Archive if you wish. So if you want to support Facebook's Instant Games system, you can. I'm not going to bother doing that. It's going to go ahead and click OK. This will run the build. So if you do run this build and you get an error 12, do make sure to try it again as administrator and see if that fixes everything. Otherwise, you will get an... Um, uh, well, a status OK message basically saying here your application has been built successfully and we can go ahead and either open up an explorer or we'll just go ahead and open that in a web browser. And here you see the web browser opens up da, 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 and circles start falling and you can go ahead and click one to get rid of it. And then at any particular time we can go up here and cut the rope 
and see physics in action. So you see we are running in our browser, very straightforward. Uh, it's using it through this uh, Corona Live server. So you don't need to worry about cores or um, any kind of uh, XHR browser problems here. They basically provide a server for you. And you can click this guy to basically, oh, no, that's just information. Nothing really special there, but you can see down here, this is your server running. Oh, it's off screen and over here. So. Uh, they provide a server for you, uh, pretty straightforward, pretty easy to use. And there you see a Corona application running in the browser. And in this particular case, it's actually running just fine in Edge. Uh, I also ran it in Chrome and in uh, Firefox. Didn't have a problem with any of those browsers. So it seems to have pretty good broad browser support. Uh, let's see, we'll go ahead and oh, modify it. We can relaunch. So you can run it in their mobile simulator. You can build it for, at this point in time anyways, uh, Android and Windows platform. I'm not sure about iOS. I don't know what happened there. Uh, but again, uh, new functionality. The biggest thing I'm highlighting today is that new HTML5 export functionality. And as you saw, it is pretty simple to use. But do again, be aware of that caveat that you need to run as an administrator on Windows 10, or at least I had to, or I got an error 12. So if you get an error 12, do be sure to heed that advice. Um, and then if you want to edit your code, ultimately, this is very simple and straightforward Lua, which I believe I just shut down anyway, so I can't show it to you. Uh, but it by default will open up in Visual Studio Code if you have it installed. And it's a pretty straightforward, clean um, coding mechanism. Anyways, it's, it's Lua has always been a bit of a joy to work with. And Corona is pretty simple to get started with. So if you're interested in checking that out, the Corona website is coronalabs.com. As I mentioned earlier on, this is free uh, right now. I'm not really sure what their their profit system is. They keep changing their, their setup on how they make money. Um, so basically you see here, no hidden fees, charges, or royalties. Um, so you don't pay for, ah, that's it. You never pay for core functionality. So I believe they do add uh, third-party plugins and I think they do some revenue share ad systems. Uh, so if you want to do ad-based advertising using one of their plugins, they take a certain percentage of your profit. I think that might be how they monetize their system. But if you are interested in checking out, like I said, Corona has been around forever. So there is a ton of learning materials. There is a ton of samples involved in there. Um, yeah, I, I actually don't have enough personal experience here to give you a recommendation for or against Corona. I haven't really seen a lot of updates from them in, in the most, you know, most recently anyways. Like I said, the last release was last year. Um, so this is kind of out of the blue that this update came. But you know what? A new target support is definitely cool. And these kind of frameworks definitely do need to support HTML5 in this day and age. So that is a nice update to see added. All right, that's it for now. Just uh, what's your opinion? Do you like Corona? Have you used Corona in the past? Are you interested in trying Corona in the future? Or do you think it's a bit of a dinosaur at this point in time? Do you like the Lua programming language? Do you hate the Lua programming language? Or have you never used the Lua programming language? Interested in answers to all those things? Let me know in the comments down below. All right. Oh, and once again, as always, all of the links will be in the stories down below. So I will link to, well, everything. So if you're interested in learning more, check out the links down below and you can learn more. And if you want to get up to date game development news as it breaks, do be sure to click that subscribe. And of course, that bell icon, because apparently the bell is the new subscribe. Um, all right. Talk to you all later. Goodbye.